So now we are discussing the octagonal roof section of the advanced roof practical. Here we can see these are all of the rafters that we worked out in the previous video. So hopefully you've uh, still got all those notes written down. You'll notice also that this picture is a little bit more zoomed in than the previous ones. We've lost a little bit of information around the outsides. We can also only see two of those formulas we had up. The third one is uh, hidden up above. But that GL formula that you can't see anymore, hopefully you've used it enough on these rafters that you can remember it. So I'm going to highlight this ridge board here. We haven't worked out these ridges yet. That'll happen in a later video. If I highlight this rafter right on the end here, now this is exactly the same rafter at the other end of the roof. This is a crown in rafter just like that one, right on the end of the ridge. With the octagonal roof, however, we also have some more crown ends. So these are still apply the same rules as all the other crown ends. They are at right angles to the top plate and they come up into the middle of the hip where the ridge and the rafters and the crown ends are all join together. Same here, they're at right angles to the top plate and they meet right up at the peak where the hips and rafters all join. So we actually have three crown ends. And if you'll remember from the previous videos, the run and the GL of these crown ends are the same as the run and the GL of the common rafters. Only the deductions will change and that we'll deal with later. So these four rafters we have actually already worked out because we worked out these ones. They all have a 700 run and an 808 geometric length and that is based on 1400 span and a root pitch of 30 degrees for the sake of this example. So that just leaves these hips. So we have a hip running along here which will be the same as all of these hips and again these comply with the same rules. The hip comes down into the corner of the top plate, into an external corner, and they are splitting the difference of the angle between the commons and the crown ends. That is the same here. They start at the external corner, and they are halfway in that angle made by the common and the crown end rafters. I've just redrawn this triangle here up the top. So we've got our common rafter, our top plate, and our hip rafter. Now this triangle is sitting flat on the deck, it's run and run, so we're not looking at GLs yet, we're just looking at the runs, and the horizontal measurement across the top plate as well. So there's the run of our common rafter. So in order to get the run of this hip rafter, we have one piece of information about this triangle, but we need two. So we either need that angle, or we need the distance across here. So for this triangle, we're going to get this angle here. That distance will work out for another purpose later. If we look along this common rafter, and then along that crowning rafter, that actually forms a right angle, 90 degrees, which means if we look down this crown in rafter, that gives us half of that which is 45 degrees, which means if we look from there along to this hip, that is half of that again, so half of 45 is 22 and a half degrees. So very quickly we've worked out that we've got 22 and a half degrees in here. So I want you to pause the video for a moment and have a think about what you are going to type into the calculator to work out this distance along here, the run of this hip rafter. So hopefully you are going to use the same formula we used for these common rafters, our GL formula. Even though this is not a GL we're working out, that shape triangle and the information we have is the same shape triangle that we were working out for these common rafters. We have the run of that common rafter divided by the cosine of 22 and a half will give us the run of that hip rafter, even though it's a geometric length formula, it gives us the run of this, because that's the shape triangle that we have. So I type that into the calculator, 
and I end up with a run of 758 for this distance along here. Hopefully you got the same measurement when you tried it out. Uh, so there's the run there for that hip. So the next thing we're going to need to do is to get the geometric length of this formula. So in order to do that, I'm going to take you to a three-dimensional uh, view just to get a uh, slightly different view on this. So here's the end of the octagonal roof. This is the hip raft that we're looking at the moment. I'm going to throw in these lines here. These are the things that we've already worked out. So these blue lines are the run of the commons and the crown ends at 700. And these yellow lines are the runs of the hip rafters at 758 each. This rafter here is the rafter that we're looking at. This is the geometric length of the hip rafter. Just to make it easier to see from this point of view, I'm going to flip that over to this side. They're going to be exactly the same as each other, so we can work out this here. So, to get that, in that previous slide, we took 700 divided by the cosine of 22.5 to give us this. This here is the geometric length of that common rafter. So that's where the actual common rafter sits up the rack of the roof. And that we worked out in the previous video, 808 for the geometric length of that. So that's all the information we have. So I'm just going to drop that out. These dotted lines are the run measurements. So they're not real pieces of timber sitting down the bottom there, they're just lines that we're measuring to. And there is that 22 and a half degrees in there. So it's important to remember that that angle is not 22 and a half degrees up the top here. It's 22 and a half down on the horizontal plane down here. This angle up the top here is an edge angle and it will actually be less than that. It's a different angle and we'll deal with edge angles in another video. So make sure you remember which position the angle is that you're talking about at any particular time. So now we want to get this distance across here. So I want you to have a look at this triangle in here. This is the one we have. We have an angle and we have a side. This is actually the right angle section of it. If I just go backwards to that previous slide, there's our right angle. Well, this is the one we're actually looking at from uh, top plate to common raft to run. So I'll head back to where we were. So there's our right angle. We have this measurement, we have the angle. So I want you to decide what formula will give us this distance across the end here where the top plate is. So hopefully you chose this here. This is our rise equals run times the tan of the pitch measurement. So if we go 700 times the tan of 22.5 degrees, that will give us 290 from centre of rafter to corner of top plate, making this triangle down the bottom here. So now we have everything we need to get the geometric length of this raft. We have a triangle. It's a right angle triangle. This is the right angle on that side. And we have two sides of this right angle triangle. So just like the previous hip up here that we worked out before, we're going to use Pythagoras. 808 squared plus 290 squared. Square root of the answer equals 830 for our geometric length of that hip raft of there, which will also be the geometric length of the other hips. So now there's our 830 for the geometric length of that rafter and we are left with all of these are the rafters are the ones we've just worked out. We've got our, all our crown ends in our commons and we have all the hips around there. Alright in the next video we're going to look at the splayed end at this end.